Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope you've had an awesome weekend and that you've had a good Monday. We're actually working not just on differentiation, but on all forms of calculus at the moment. Well, I mean, the main part is differentiation, obviously. But we're looking at drawing functions, at looking at max and min, and all sorts of different questions because it makes up a really big part of paper one. And I want to make sure that you guys can do this. So we're going to carry on with um, the questions that we were finishing um, that we did already. So far we have, we were busy looking at how to draw this graph. It said sketch H showing the intersects with the X axes and the coordinates of stationary points. And so far we found the Y cuts and we found the X cuts are 0, minus 3 and 5. Now we then derived, we found the derivative of this. And why did we do that? Because we're looking for the coordinates of the stationary points. So we need to find out what the derivative is and then we're going to let it equal 0. So we got as far as doing 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. And we we're going to factorize this. I hope you realize it. We we're going to factorize this to find the x values of the stationary points. In other words, we're finding the turning points of this graph. So the factors of 3 are obviously 3 and 1. And the factors of 15 are 5 and 3. And I think that, no, wait, let's have a look. 3 and 5 and 15 and 1, which is going to be ridiculous. We want a different, the signs are different, and they have to add up to minus 4. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 times 5 is 5. If we go minus 9 plus 5, we get a minus 4, which means the minus has to be in front of the 3, and then remember we write across. So it becomes 3x plus 5, it becomes x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, 0 is equal to 3x plus 5, or x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, 3x is equal to minus 5. Therefore, x is equal to minus 5 over 3, or x equals 3. But we're not finished, do you agree? Because that is the x values of the turning point, and they've asked you to show the coordinates of the stationary points. So we actually need the, what do we need? We need the y values as well. And how do you get the y value? You substitute back into the original. So we're going to go 1 over 6 times by minus 5 over 3 all cubed, minus a third times by minus 5 over 3 all squared, minus 5 over 2 times 5 minus 5 over 3. So minus times a plus times a minus is a minus, and that becomes 5 over 18. Minus times a plus is a minus, that's 5 over 9, 3 times 3 is 9. Minus times a minus is a plus, 5 fives are 25 over 6. And now, quite candidly, I'd get up my calculator and I would use it, obviously. So let's have a look at it. So let's clear this. So we've got minus a fraction of 5 over 18 minus a fraction of 5 over 9 plus a fraction of 25 over 6 and that is equal to 10 over 3, 10 over 3. So your first point is going to be minus 5 over 3, 10 over 3. That's your first cut, okay, your first changing point. Now let's substitute x equal to 3 in it. So it's going to be 3 something. Okay, so it's going to be 1 6 times by 3 cubed, minus a third times by 3 squared, minus 5 over 2 times by 3. Okay, so 3 cubed is 27, right? 3 times 3 is 9 times by 3 is 27. So that's 27 over 6, minus, that's 9 over 3, which is just 3, 
minus 5 to the 15, 5 to the 15, should I say, over 2. And again, I now need my calculator. Okay, so this time it is clear. Fraction 27 over 6 minus 3 minus um, 15 over 2, which is 7 and a half, equals minus 6. So this time it's minus 3 minus 6. Okay, so now I'm just going to erase all the, unfortunately, the blue stuff is from the last lesson. So we can't get rid of that. It's a bit sad. But if I do, then I lose all the other information. So it's not worth it. Um, so let's just quickly erase like this. And then we can draw this graph. Okay, so let's draw it. So first of all, meow. It cuts at the y cut is zero. It also cuts the x cut cuts at naught. Do you agree that ten over three is the same as three and a third? Okay, just by the way, minus five over three is minus one and two thirds. Just to give you some idea, since we're plotting. Okay, and our biggest number is a minus six. Um, well, I mean, as in the value, that's the y value. And the biggest number here is a five. Okay, so the y cut is at zero. Okay, and so is an x cut. Okay, we have an x cut at minus three, so about over there, and an x cut over here at about five. So that's minus three, and that is five. We have a my turning point at minus one and two thirds, about halfway, and three and a third. And we have another turning point at x equals three, y equals minus six. So this graph does something like this. We Okay, more or less, it should have gone through there. Okay, but remember that you guys are going to be drawing using a pencil. So, it'll, if you miss it, you can just erase, okay? So, this point here is going to be minus 5 over 3, 10 over 3. And this point here is 3 minus 6. And there you go, you've got your graph. So, this is h of x. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Okay, now it says determine the equation of tangent to h when x equals minus 1. So, at x equals minus 1, there is some graph, okay, which is a tangent to it, okay, and they want to know what is the equation of, and that is obviously y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so what do we know about this? We know that we have the equation for the gradient. The equation for the gradient is h dashed of x. So we know that the equation for the gradient is this thing here. We can admittedly I manipulated it a bit, but that's the equation for the gradient. So h dashed of x can be given by 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. So do you agree that I can get the gradient at that point? Because this is the equation for the gradient at every point on this graph, okay? So if you're a little bit worried about that, you can always go back if that worries you. We can always go back to the point where it wasn't manipulated. So let's say we go back to h dashed of x is equal to, we're going to look use that one, okay? Is equal to half x squared minus 2 over 3 x minus 5 over 2 and at this point what is x? x is minus 1 so we can substitute it so it goes a half times minus 1 squared minus 2 over 3 times minus 1 minus 5 over 2 that's minus 1 squared is 1 so it's a half minus times minus is plus 2 over 3 minus 5 over 2 Okay, so then again, you can just pop that in your calculator. It's probably easier. So we've got 0 0.5 plus a fraction 2 over 3 minus, oh, no, what did I do now? Delete. Uh, okay, I don't know what I did. Okay, so it goes plus a fraction 2 over 3 move over better, minus a fraction of 5 over 2 equals, and that's minus 4 over 3.
3. So the gradient is m is minus 4 over 3. And if we look at it, we see that it should be a negative gradient for the simple reason that it actually is sloping up to the left. So we're quite happy with that. Now we need to find out what the y point is of that because we've got the gradient and we've got the x value there. The x value there is minus 1. We need the y value to be able to substitute into this equation. So how are we going to find the y value? We're going to find the y value by substituting minus 1 into the original of this big horrible h of x. So we're going to go 1 sixth times our minus 1 cubed minus a third times by minus one squared, minus five over two times by minus one. That's what we're going to be doing. And I just need to raise this bit to get it out of the way. Okay, because we need to know what that y value is at that point to substitute into that equation. So if we do that, we've got it's equal to minus one sixth, Okay, minus one third, a minus times a minus is a plus five over two. Okay, the common denominator is six, we might as well just do this quickly, so it becomes minus one, three goes into six twice, it becomes minus two, two goes into it three times, three times five is 15. So that becomes 15 minus three is 12 over six which equals 2. So that point there is minus 1, 2. How nice is that? So we're going to substitute. We now have the gradient. It's minus 4 over 3. We've got this point where x is minus 1, y is 2, and we can substitute in and find out where it cuts the, the y-axis. So we're going to say 2 is equal to minus 4 over 3 times negative 1 plus c. So it becomes 2 is minus times and minus is a plus, so that's plus 4 over 3, then we're going to minus 4 over 3 again is equal to c. So common denominator is 3, so that becomes 6 minus 4 is c, so c is 2 thirds. So that point there is 2 thirds. But that's not what they ask, they ask for the equation, so we have to write it out. So it becomes y is equal to minus 4 over 3x plus 2 over 3. Wow, grade 12. That's actually quite a nice question. Okay, I'm a bit of a masochist when it comes to nice questions. So I find that question to be very, very nice. I like that question a lot. Okay. That means that I would set it in the exam paper. Okay, so now let's look at another question. So this one is a little bit different. Um, this is looking at max and min, and this does, all these questions come out of old exam papers. So please don't think I'm just pulling these out of a hat, a random place, and I'm bringing you all sorts of different questions that you can possibly get in your final exams, okay? So it says in the diagram, ABC is an equilateral triangle, okay, with sides equal to P units. So the whole of this is P, the whole of that is P, and obviously then the whole of that is P as well, right? It says DFG is a rectangle such that BE equals FC, and they're both X. Okay, so this is a rectangle, DEFG is a rectangle, okay? So do you agree if that is X and that is X, how long does this side have to be? Well, if that's x and that's x and the whole of this is p, do you agree this is p minus 2x? Okay. And if that's the case, then this is also p minus 2x. Okay, you with me? Because that is a rectangle, so this is equal to and parallel to that side. So that's p minus 2x and that's p minus 2x. Right, now it says show the a the rectangle is root 3 times p minus 2x. Okay, so we've already got one side, p minus 2x. Ching! Now we need to somehow find this side here. We need to find this side here. And this is actually using ratio and proportion. And um, you guys actually, yeah, we haven't actually done that in our questions yet, but we're still going to go through it now. So because this line is equal to that line, okay? Um, it means parallel to that line, okay? They've said this is a, 
sorry, let me try again. D, F, G is a parallelogram, which means that this is equal to this, okay? That means that this is P minus 2X, that there is, again, the whole of that is P, okay? And we also know that if this is going to be, that will, that will be parallel with this, and this will be equal, okay? We also know that it says ABC is the equilateral triangle with sides P. So the whole of this is P, and the whole of this is P. And they tell you that this is equal to that, okay? Now, it says show the area of the rectangle is root three, okay? So how are we going to show that this line here is equal to root 3? Well, if you think about it, do you agree, well, root 3x, I say, do you agree that if this is an equilateral triangle, do you agree that this angle here is 60, that angle there is 60, and that angle there is 60? So do you agree that we have spatial triangle here, where this is 60, this is 90, 90, and then this one would have to be 30 degrees. It's the only angle at size it can be. So do you agree that that thing there, let me just let me just change color so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Let's change the highlighter. Okay, this triangle here is the same as a spatial triangle. Oh, I wanted pen. Pen. It's the same as a spatial triangle. I'll draw it bigger. Whee! Okay, with that there is 60, is the same as that angle. This here is going to be 30, because that is 90, that's 90 there. Okay, because I told you it's a rectangle, so that has to be 90, which means this is 30. So do you agree that the ratio of the sides are 2, 1, root 3? Okay, but they've told us that this side is actually x, so do you agree that it would be 1 times x? There would be 2 times x, and this would be root 3x. So therefore, this side here has to be root 3x. And there you go. That's root 3x times by p minus 2x. So therefore, the area of this can be given. The area of the rectangle is going to be length, which is p minus 2x, times by the breadth, which is root 3 times x. So it's root 3x times by p minus 2x. There you go. Now it says determine in terms of p, in terms of p, the maximum area of the rectangle. So they want the terms in terms of p, okay? So what is wrong with this? Do you see that we have got locks x's here? So we can't have that. We need to do something to try and get rid of these x's. Okay, how are we going to do that? Okay, because so it says determine in terms of P, the maximum area of the rectangle. So first we need to get this without any P's in it. Okay, so do you agree that we know, what do we know? We know all three sides equal P. This is P. That is P, and that is P, okay? We also know that this is P minus 2X, and that's X, and that's X, okay? And that is root 3X, okay? Sorry, I'm just having a look at something. So, what we could do... Oh, no, we're fine. So the only thing we have to do is we still just have to, it says in terms of P, which means that there must be P in your answer. So all we're going to do is whenever we find a maximum, what do we do? We differentiate. Okay, so if we do that, do you agree that this is going to be D area, sorry, D area by DX again? Okay, but in order to get that, we need to multiply this thing out first. So the area is going to be root 3 xp minus 2 root 3 x squared. Okay, happy with that. Now we need to find the first derivative. As always, whenever you want to find the maximum of anything, we will find the first derivative and you let it equal naught. So we're going to go, that becomes 
so this is with respect to x as always so it's going to be a dashed of x is going to be first of all it's root 3p minus 2 root 3 take the 2 to the front times by 2 x to the 1 so that becomes root 3p minus okay 4 root 3x now it says what is the maximum area so what do we need to do we need to let this thing equal 0 and solve for it okay we need to let this thing equal 0 and then solve for it if we do that we want it in terms of p so we have to solve for x so we're going to let this equal 0 so therefore we're going to say that we can take out a root 3 do you agree and we're left with p minus 4 x equals 0 so obviously the root 3 can go away so therefore we can say p minus 4x equals 0 I'm writing the top left hand corner now we're solving for x because we want to find out what is this maximum area in terms of p so therefore we can say well x minus 4x has to be p so x is going to be minus p sorry so x is going to be minus p over minus 4 so x is equal to p over 4 so the maximum this can be okay listen to me carefully the max the, the x value for the maximum area is p over 4 but they didn't ask that they asked you for the maximum area in terms of p which means we now have to take all this and what we're going to do is wherever we see an x here, we're going to multiply by, we're going to put in p over 4. Because what we're saying is that this is the equation for the area. When x equals p over 4, we get a maximum value for area. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We know that the area is root 3x p minus 2x what when p x is p over 4 we get a maximum value so we get root 3 times by p over 4 times by p minus 2 times by p over 4 which becomes root 3 times by p over 4 this becomes p minus p over 2 right because the two cancel that become a two p minus p over two is what it's p to the half it's a half of p right so this is equal to root three times by p over four times by p over two which is root three p squared all over eight and that's your final answer so we think the maximum area of the rectangle is root three p squared over eight Okay, root 3 p squared over 8 for the maximum area. So how did we do that? Remember what we did? We said, okay, fine. We find a dashed of x. You let it equal naught. You solve for x. And we find that x equals p over 4 for maximum area. Okay. We then have to substitute that back into the equation of the area to actually find what the maximum area of the rectangle is okay so that's quite a hectic question it's quite sneaky and nasty honestly grade 12s i would really suggest that if you want to do really make sure that you understand this stuff is not just watch the video and watch me doing it but what i would suggest you do is that you re-watch the video and start the question again so when it looks like this Okay, you go, okay, fine. Just pause the video and then try this question for yourselves, okay? And then do the question for yourselves, see if you get it right. And then if not, then watch the question, watch it. And basically learn from your mistakes. Okay, let's do a different question. It says an industrial process requires water to flow through its system as part of the cooling cycle. Water flows continuously through the cycle for a certain period of time. Okay, so it doesn't stop. 
It says the relationship between the time from when the water starts flowing and the rate at which the water is flowing through the system is given by the equation R equals 0.2 T squared plus 10 T, where T is measured in seconds. Okay. It says after how long will the water be flowing at a maximum rate? So guys, as soon as we see maximum, what do we know? We know that we have to do dr by dt, let it equal naught and solve for, in this case, t. Okay, for maximum, you find the first derivative, you let it equal naught and you solve for the variable. So in this case, they tell you that the rate is minus 2 times by t squared plus t10. Okay, so dr by dt is going to be, let's just write dr by, no, let's do it over here. dr over dt is going to be, the 2 goes to the front, so it becomes minus 0, 2 multiplied by 2, t, because 2 minus 1 is t, plus 10. Okay, so then do you agree? that this becomes minus 0, 0,4 t plus 10. Now we need to solve for t by letting it equal 0. So we're going to let dr by dt equal 0 for the maximum value, right? So you go minus 0, 0,4 t plus 10 equals 0. So you got minus 0, 0,4 t is equal to minus 10. So therefore t is going to be 10 divided by 0, 0,4, which should be 40. Yes, it is. 40 seconds. So how long will the water be flowing at a maximum rate is 40 seconds. Okay, 40 seconds. Then it says, after how many seconds will the water stop flowing? After how many seconds will the water stop flowing? Well, what will the rate be if the water stops flowing? Do you agree the rate will be zero because there'll be no change in volume? So do you agree that the rate will be zero when the water stops flowing? Okay, the rate is going to be zero when the water stops flowing. So what we can do is we can, okay, I'm just going to remember 40 seconds. Okay, we can say this is 40 seconds. We can let r equal zero and then solve for t. So if we let r equal to zero, we've got zero is equal to minus 0, 0,2t squared plus 10t. And now we need to solve for t. So we get t minus 0, 0,2t plus 10 equals 0. So obviously t equals 0. But that makes sense because the rate would have been 0 at before it started running, right? Now we need to find out when it will going to stop running again. So therefore we've got minus 0, 0,2t is equal to minus 10. So t is minus 10 divided by negative 0, 0,2. So those cancel, and then if you're not sure, you go 10 divided by 0 0.2, and that is 50. So that is 50 seconds. So it reaches its maximum rate at 40 seconds, and it stops running at 50 seconds. Okay, there you go. Reaches its max rate at 40 seconds, it speeds up, 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 and then it stops again at 50 seconds. So do you see what we did there? We knew that the rate was given by this equation and they said that that is the rate, how fast it is flowing. So when it stops flowing, what does R become? R becomes zero and then you just solve for your T. That's all it is, not that difficult. Okay, now another nice question. It says determine f dash of x for first principles, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 5, and then differentiate the following functions expressing your answer to positive exponents when necessary. Okay, be careful with tension to notation. So this is the first question. So again, grade 12, I'd like to seriously suggest that if you're watching this live, that you try and stay a little bit ahead of me. So in other words, now when I'm busy chatting, you should be trying to work out what the first derivative is using first principles. I'll give you a hint. F dashed of x is equal to the limit 
as h tends to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, but now what do we need to do? The first thing we need to do is find f of x plus h. So let's do that. So f of x plus h. So as I was saying, it would be a good idea if you could try and do this bit ahead of me and see if you get it right. If you can't, then watch and learn during the lesson and then come back and try this by yourself. So we want f of x plus h. So wherever we see an x, we're now going to put in x plus h. So it becomes 3 times x plus h squared minus 5 becomes 3 x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5 which becomes 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5. And that there is the equation for f of x plus h. Now we need to substitute it into this thing. Okay. So I'm just going to write over here f of x plus h is equal to 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5 because we need it. Let me check 3x squared plus 6xh, thought so, plus 3h squared minus 5. And I'm going to erase this so that I've got space to write. Okay, although I think I'm going to write below, but anyway, let's have a look. Okay, so we got in red f dashed of x, the limit, I'm sorry. If that is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus, but I'm not going to write all that down again, okay, is equal to f of x plus h is given by 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5 minus, always remember your minus, and then it becomes 3x squared minus 5 all divided by h, which becomes the limit as h tends to 0 of 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5 minus some of the pluses minus 3x squared minus some of the minuses plus 5. And see how wrong you would have got it if you didn't put your brackets in. You would have had minus 3x squared, possibly minus 3x squared minus 5. All over h. Okay, equals the limit of h tends to 0. So 3x squared cancels with 3x squared and minus 5 cancels with plus 5. So you left with 6xh plus 3h squared all over h. So we can take out a common factor of h to get the limit as h tends to 0 of h 6x plus 3h all over h, those cancel. Now we're going to let h equal to 0. So if we let h equal to 0, what are you left with? The limit. Sorry, you don't write that down. It's just 6x. So that's the final answer. The final answer is 6x. And then remember, we can use our rule. We can say, well, let's factorize this. I mean, differentiate with the rule. 2 goes in the front and becomes 6x. Ta-da! We got it right. Sure. Okay, now. Next, it says differentiate the following functions, express your answer to the positive exponent when necessary. Be careful, please pay careful not attention to notation. Okay, so do you agree that the only way that I can differentiate this is to multiply these brackets? So we can say y is equal to first of the first, which is 10x squared. Then it becomes minus 4x plus 15x minus 4x plus 15x and then it becomes obviously minus 6 so that becomes 10x squared minus okay plus 9x Let's try again it's 11x okay plus 11x minus 6 and now we need to differentiate it, but remember it says be careful of notation. So now you're going to go dy by dx is equal to, um, okay, this becomes 20x plus 11. Okay, 
That's how easy that is, okay? Now we've got g of x, and they've got x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2, okay? So we've got g of x is equal to x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2. Okay, so what we're going to do is factorize this because this is the sum and difference of two cubes. So this becomes g of x is equal to x plus 2. And then there's an easy way of doing this. You go first into first is x squared, last into last is plus 4. This gives me 2x squared and that is going to give me minus 2x squared because there's no x squared term there. So it becomes minus um, okay, that gives you 2x squared. I want minus 2x. There you go. And now we can see if we can factorize that. I don't know if we can. It says, wrong word. It says 1 and 1 and 2 and 2. No, you can't factorize this. Okay, so that's okay because this is still over x plus 2. So those cancel. So now we have g of x is x squared minus 2x plus 4 and now we want to find g dashed of x okay the first derivative so that becomes 2x minus 2 Ta -da! okay so that's that one now let's try f of x and you'll see there's a square root x plus 5 over x and you can see now why i've chosen these questions because in fact, I can just erase all the writing. Um, because it, these are actually quite tricky questions. Let's have a look at this. We've got f of x equals x to the square root, square root x plus five over x. Okay, so again, we don't know how to do differentiation by when there's a quotient, there's a quotient rule that you'll learn in varsity or college or whatever. But in this case, we don't know it. So we have to take it slowly and we divide this x into both the numbers a bit under. So it becomes f of x is root x over x plus 5 over x. So do you agree that it becomes x to the half minus 1? Okay, because that's x to the half and this is at the bottom. Oopsie, plus 5x to the negative 1. So that becomes x to the minus a half plus 5x to the minus 1, and that's still f of x. And now we need to find f dashed of x. Okay, so f dashed of x is equal to, you take the minus half to the front, it becomes minus a half, x to the minus half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2, minus 5, because when you take that across it becomes a minus, minus 5x to the negative, two remember they said they want to answer in positive exponents so can you leave your answer like this no you can't so what does it become it becomes minus a half times by x oh sorry let's try again um one over the square root of x cubed minus five over x squared minus 5 over x squared. Guys, if you don't like writing it like that, you're welcome to write it as just 3 over 2. That's not a problem. Okay, and I personally would make this eat neater. I'd go minus 1 over 2 square root x cubed minus 5 over x squared. I would just make it a little bit neater. Right, so that's that question. Okay, that was quite nice. Do you agree? Right, now it says, consider the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. And they say they want the intercepts of both axes, the coordinates of the stationary points, so x coordinates of the point of inflection. Yay, a point of inflection. Sketch the graph, then use the graph to determine. Okay, this is a typical exam question. It's a gorgeous exam question. Okay, so let's do the easy bits first, okay, because we are running out of time. Let's find the y-intercept. Do you agree that the y-intercept, where it cuts the y-axis, is just minus 4? There it is there. If x is naught, y is minus 4. Sort it. Right, now we've got to find the y-cuts. So what do we have to do? We have to factorize using the factor theorem. So I'm going to try 1. So f of 1 is going to be 1 minus 6 times 1 plus 9 minus 4. Okay. So 1 minus 6 is minus 5, okay? 
Then we plus 9 and we get 9 minus 5 is 4. And then minus 4 is equal to 0. Yay! So x equals 1 definitely works. So now we need to solve for this. So it becomes x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4 is equal to, if 1 works, then x minus 1 is a factor. Then we go first into first is x squared. Last into last is plus 4. And then what do we do? Remember we write a random plus kx here just to help us. This times this is minus x squared. This times this is plus kx squared. And it has to equal minus 6x squared. So therefore, what does k have to be? k has to be minus 5. So you've got, therefore, that this is, this bit here, is x minus 1. And then it becomes x squared minus 5x plus 4. Um, and let's think about that. Both the signs have to be the same and they both have to be negative. So it becomes x minus 1. That's 1 and 1 and 4 and 1 minus 4 minus 1. x minus 1. x minus 4. Sure. So now we know that the intercepts, the x-intercepts, are going to be the x-intercepts are going to be x minus 1, or well, sorry, at x equals 1, or x equals 1, or it's going to be x equals 4. Okay, so now we know the x-intercepts, and we know the y-intercept. Okay, and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. We know where it cuts the y-axis. I know where it cuts the x-axis. So therefore, we know that but there the intercepts are both axes which is a1 okay if you can it'd be awesome if you guys could take a screenshot and try this question for yourselves at home or just wherever you are and then come back tomorrow and see if you got it right okay and obviously this is a second x equals one as well okay so we've done the intercepts of both okay we are now going to do two and three but not today we're going to do this tomorrow have a great day grade 12s